Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Square Eye Syndrome podcast. I am the host, Ben Gilman. I am, as always, joined by uh, Troy, Mr. Fan Service Salmon. <laughs> Hiya. You guys okay? I dread to think what you're going to tell me today. I've already booked a therapist appointment. Oh, God Lord. damn it. Last week. <laughs> prison school. Uh, I'm joined by professional Peter Jackson impersonator, Tom Hill. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, lads? Oh, man, I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I love that intro. I loved it, by the way. Hey, I've got more worse ones. It's fine. I thought we needed to have a bit more buoyancy. That's my new word of the week, buoyancy. Mm, I so, like it. The, the world's going to hell outside. I might as well smile as it burns around me. Um, so, who's going first this week? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll bang out this week. I'll do it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Troy, uh, Tom, I think this is a bit where we let Troy talk on his own for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, hey, hey, hey. It's, it's crazy this, this week, to be fair. And shit. <laughs> All right, okay. So I'm going to start with you guys. Okay, so it's something called, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I know some people, on the, if they listen to the podcast right now, they've probably seen it or heard of it. Motherland, Fort Salem. So. No, don't know it. Oh yeah! Oh damn! It's been everywhere. But um, a lot of people on YouTube have been talking about it. So, um, people are saying it might be SJW or you know, say social justice warrior. But it's actually pretty good. This show, Mother and Fort Salem. So, it's mostly a predominantly female cast. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's a supernatural type of thing. So it's witchcraft and all that stuff. So right. basically, yeah, yeah. So literally, it's really good. Um, so if you're into the stuff like charms and stuff like that, then it's a really good show. That's just kind of. Like, so what's it about? What's it about? Come on. Oh. So here we go. Here we go. So here we go. So I'm gonna break it down. So basically, um, during the Salem witch trials, when literally um the people were trying to burn them at the stake and all that stuff. So during the war, they've basically joined an accord with each other. And they've teamed up to actually the witches actually helping the Americans fight wars against other these outside threats. The main threat is called the Spree. They're like the main villains of the show. So they're like a rogue witch faction, and they use balloons and anything with air trapped in it so they'll literally use a balloon and do a spell inside that balloon pop the balloon and every literally a mass of people would actually die it's crazy it's really good trust me it's like it it for that witchcraft it's crazy it's amazing really good show and literally um there's three main protagonists of the show you got um a girl called abigail another girl called rael and Another girl called Tally. So they're like the three main um, teens and teenagers of the show. Um, they're like the ones where we see through their eyes and what's going on throughout the show. So um, they join like a, a school, like a like a like a, like a soldier school, to so get Tom um, trained up to fight this um, threat called the Spree. And throughout the show, it's almost like Game of Thrones, in a way. It's almost like a mixture of like Game of Thrones and I'd say Charmed. So it's a mixture of like those two shows. Um, bad stuff goes down. People die. They actually don't care how people die in this show. It's crazy how they actually do it. It's creative in ways they kill each other. It's almost like a horror slash supernatural. It's, it's insane. It's really good. It's really good. Trust me. It's so good. You know, when you say it's better than Charmed, I mean, that's not hard. Really. No, no, I is it better than Charmed? I would never say it's better than Charmed. No way. Oh. I'd say it's... I was, <laughs> come on, you know it's better than that. Charmed is a classic. Come on now. Charmed has got a good theme song. Oh, come on. Here we go. Here we go, guys. And Please. that's all there is to say about that. <laughs> Are you backing me up here, Tom? Yeah. Oh, come, on, Tom. Right. come on, Tom. Come on, come I, on. Just, I just couldn't get into it, bro. I, I tried. You know what? I, 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 I gave Charm the chance because I liked Buffy. But... Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll give you that. Buffy wipes his ass on Charms. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. You guys have no soul. It you doesn't even know it's there. It's that insignificant a show. And fans, come at me, because I'm not scared of you Twilight-loving motherfuckers, okay? Come at me. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Do you want to know the best thing? Charmed, name. Put some respect on its name. The effects. The Charmed. best thing that came out Charmed. They started the... Oh, my God. Sorry. The best thing that came out of Charmed was that Paige chose her wrestling name based on Charmed. <laughs> to her favourite character in that. That's really oh, is, is that true? Is it for real? Well, that I think so. It's from, um, you know, the film Fighting With My Family. Yeah. They said that's why she chose Paige, because she couldn't oh, use snap. Britney. Okay. Yeah. I thought I thought I didn't watch the movie. That's why I thought that's, that's my nice. Oh, yeah. You never seen the film? No, I haven't seen it. Awesome. It's it's on Netflix. I do want to watch it because it's meant to be quite good. 
Right, just a side re- side recommendation of a film fighting with my family, both of you. Wrestling. Oh, wrestling, wrestling movie. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Literally, I'll see Seriously, it. Seriously, it's one of the best wrestling movies ever. Oh, damn, okay. That, that's, that's a spoiler. Cool the Wrestler, I remember that. Why is Vince that's McMahon quality. Don't, don't be knocking that. That's quality, man. <laughs> it's good shit. Oh, my <laughs> day. Okay. It's very true. <laughs> all right okay so literally right, let's and, stay on um, point guys <laughs> yeah, yeah okay let's get back up all right let's so and as well there's like literally a leader um and literally she's like 300 and something years old and she's like leading these group of women to fight this free and they've got a really cool concept as well they've got these um she's got these subordinates called biddies like oh, the, the term old biddy so literally she has these young recruits and they give um, their life force to her to literally keep her living, like literally staying young for like forever. Basically, that's what they've done. They've, anyone who dies, they just get replaced by a, a young recruit. They go, I've got, I want to do this all my life, and I'm like, I, I see this. I'm like, damn, that is creative. That is insane. But yeah, though, that is a Motherland Fort Salem. Check it out. Is that the name of it? Yeah, it's called Motherland Fort Salem. Yeah. Motherland. Yeah, it's Motherland. Making notes, dude. Motherland. Yeah, Salem. Port Salem, got it. Okay. Yeah, Overland Port Salem. So, <laughs> see, it's not that crazy this week. It's not as crazy this week. I'm gonna go crazy soon, but this I'm waiting for you to knock us out with the next pack. Right? <laughs> it's not, hey, it's gonna be it's gonna be normal this week. It's gonna be normal. That's what I've been watching this week. Just normal shows. Yeah, um, prison rate this week. Jesus Christ, Tom. I need to, I need to cut on my wife. It's like Vietnam flashbacks from last week. No flashbacks. <laughs> oh. Wow, man went there, yo. Full metal jacket mode. Full metal jacket mode. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so, right. so part two. We got okay, so the the crossing. So that's another show I've been watching, which is the called the crossing. I don't know if you heard of it. Have you guys heard of it? No. Yeah, so literally I've been watching that on Amazon Prime because I'm a Prime user. So I've literally been scrolling through shows on Amazon Prime. So I saw this and I was like, oh, this is a good show. I'm a sci-fi guy. I'm a sci-fi head. So mm-hmm. I was like this. So here we go. So it's so like a um, science fiction thriller. Um, so basically the movie, well, the, movie, the show starts out with these, um, basically these passengers or these people just underwater. So it's like a, a basically a, a cool scene of the underwater people, just people just like dying, trying to get out of the water. So they're in the ocean. So only, only a couple of people survived the actual crossing, as it were, through this um, time travel machine. So it's time travel involving this show as well. Um, it basically has vibes of like the Terminator. So literally they have to go back in time to stop this um, universal threat because literally they're called Apex. They're these, these um, other, other worldly baddies. They're basically humans evolved who are basically wiping out the rest of humanity so, so, you know, in the same vein as Skynet. That's basically what this um, show is really about, anyways. So you got this sheriff. He's like the leader of this town called Port. What's it called? Yeah, Port Canaan. It's Oregon, Seattle. It's like a little, little sleepy town. And basically, he sees all these people rocking up on the shore. These survivors. I think there's like 47 survivors out of 100 people who was in the ocean. And basically, this whole like conspiracy theory goes on because literally, these people who came back. There was literally a first migration. There were people who were there before them. And they basically took all these high positions in, in the world at this point, And they're basically just controlling the world. And basically trying to um, uncover this conspiracy. And the cast is fire. It's amazing. Trust me. They've got Steve Zan. I, I don't know if you guys know of Steve Zan. No. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, I think I, think I knew Tom would know. Tom would know Steve Zan. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I know. He's the kind of person I know Tom would know. Um, so yeah, so he's in Planet of the Apes, other show, Dallas, Dallas Buyers Club. He's on his other show. And what was that movie, Tom? What was it on the, against that um that trucker, that evil trucker? Oh, oh what was it? That movie is so good. Oh, uh, oh was it called not Roadkill? Term, no. Was it called Roadkill? Roadkill, yeah. It's called Roadkill, yeah, yeah. They got different names for it. Terrible, awesome. terrible film, but <laughs> terrible <laughs> film, but awesome at the same time. It's really, 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 yeah. really so bad, it's good. So yeah. So he's literally the main star of this show, The Crossing. So he's okay. like the main. Like, he's, a, he's the sheriff like, of the town, and he's actually trying to uncover all these um these mysteries and that about the who are these people who um basically come out of the ocean and survived, and who's the superpowered woman? Because I think the superpowered woman she was the 
she's been in so much stuff. Natalie Martinez, she's called Reese. She's like this, she's from Apex, the evolved humans. So literally she's looking for her daughter who's been captured by these this shadowy organization that's been going around, just rounding these people up. Um, I think what's she been on? She's been on da, 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 da. I have this really good shot that she's been on as well. Um, what was it? Underdome. She was on that, she was a star that Underdome from Dust or Dawn, the TV show. All that stuff like that. So that oh, that's another good show, Dust or Dawn. But yeah. She's been on <laughs> I just really, I'm like, damn, this is so good. You showed you something. But, yeah, she, she's like the, the, the co-star of the show as well. She's like the, and that's the type of protagonist to get, like an anti-hero. Because she's just going around just, just beating people up. She's literally the Terminator of the show. She's the Terminator. Yeah, they need to uh, get back in the... Yeah, yeah, she's, like, she's like the original female Terminator right, right now. So this was her. So, um, yeah, if this show is another good, good watch as well, go check it out. The Crossing. Solid. Okay. There we go. Cool. You actually did normal this week. Well done. Hey, I did it. I did it. I did it. Hey, I just, I sent you, I'm watching some normal shows. I just felt like it, you know? I sent you a medal or certificate yeah. or some 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 tissues or something in the place. <laughs> Come on, bro. Oh. Seriously. That was normal. Okay. I'm not so scared of Tom's selections. It's yours, though, where I just have to take a breath. I just had to like, just, just trick you for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's like a roller coaster. It's you're just coming. racing yourself. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm ready for Tom. This, Tom, this is going to be amazing. I can see that already. It's going to be great. Yeah, Tom's <laughs> up next. Shall I go next? Because Tom... Actually, actually yeah, you know what? Yeah, it's the same Tom for last. Yeah, the same for last. Yeah, we're trying to rotate around people. We're still working the kinks out of this thing. Mm. Okay. So last week I took a shot at Sunderland Football Club. <laughs> yeah, you did. Well, like, but I finished up season two, but that's not my pick. But yeah, much love. Yeah. Um, so I decided uh, Amazon, like Troy, um, Leeds United take us home because uh, okay. I will definitely say Leeds United are. It's a documentary series about Leeds United. Basically, like the Sunderland documentary that I spoke about last week, it's about mm. Leeds United wanting to go back up to the Prem. Um, now, when I was growing up, Leeds United were one of the biggest teams in the country. So unlike Sunderland, they actually have a reason to say they are one of the biggest teams in the country. They still are. <laughs> um, they have a better history. They've won trophies. And they've been away since 2004. Now, I'm a Spurs fan. Boo, cheer, whatever. I don't give a shit. Basically, shut up. Uh, basically, <laughs> basically, I really respect Leeds. They're like, you know, childhood. When I was football fan, 92, 93, your Villas, your Newcastles, your Leeds. Like, these were the teams that when they went down, I missed. Mm. And Leeds is the one team that hasn't come back up. Good. From that era. Oh, good. Wow. Oh, hold on, hold on. A bit of disturbance. No, I, I, I sense a disturbance from Tom over there. Yeah. What's your beef, boy? I hate Leeds with a passion. <laughs> but I hate Sunderland, so that's okay. Anyway, back to Leeds. So, but the but it's just more of the same. You go up and down with the team, the the group of the, the fans during the season. And I still think football fans put too much into their football team, life and death. Um, but it's enjoyable, as always. Um, the chairman isn't as much of a twat as the previous Sunderland chairman have been over mm-hmm. two seasons, so I give them that. Um, what's his name? Blasio Balasala, uh, this Italian coach. Um, quite famous, quite crazy. Oh, the chief, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, there's a great bit where you know Spygate with Derby County that happens. Very famous football thing covers that, and uh, he spends an hour and a half locking journalists in a room, showing them that his research is on every team across the country, not just Derby, and that there's nothing wrong with going to have someone scout out a training field. I don't mm. see the point of it. Quite funny, um, but they don't get promoted like Sunderland in the last season. <laughs> And <laughs> I would love to see one of these where the team, a team that I watch, would just get promoted at the end. 
Because at the moment, it feels like a really NXT ending to a takeover where they're just kicking the shit out of the is... But there's a lot of football documentaries on Amazon on the Prime section. So I might be bringing one here every week. There's one on every World Cup, for example. I like it. Yeah, it's decent. Amazon does really good football documentaries. They're, they're ridiculous. I might just take time for it. Yeah. My wife's already bored of it, but what can you do? So there's that. I would recommend it. Really well shot. That's my first pick. Okay. Uh, the second one is Sex Education. Oh, I knew it was coming. <laughs> it was coming. I can't put this off. I, I, I'm technically cheating, but I haven't spoken about it on the podcast before. So I thought I'm going to be a lazy fuck this week and just talk about something I saw last month. Sorry. Sex Education is, obviously, I don't think I have to introduce it very uh, uh it's very well known um it's a show about a boy called otis who gives sex education advice because his mum is a sex therapist at a school that confusingly enough looks like american high school with football jackets and everything <laughs> it does it's weird it's really timeless it's like a john hughes movie like the breakfast club and um but it's british um and it's just funny it's just in season two, they've increased the background characters because yeah. you had to remain. You both watched this, right? Do I need to? Yeah, I've never watched it, but I've watched it a bit, so I've never watched it though. Okay, so I'll be careful. But basically, you've got Maeve. Um, uh, there's another person who's gay, and I can't remember him. <laughs> Eric, Eric, <laughs> Eric, and Otis. They're the three main characters from season one with certain characters in the background but what they do in season two is they take those friends of them and they bring them all to main character status while introducing some new ones and i love that and they find something for everyone to do which is fantastic and it doesn't always go <coughs> in the way you think it will go i mean tom you've watched this with you've watched season two as well yeah, yeah. You? it's really clever how they've i was so it. angry at the end of season two though so, so yeah, I'm not spoiling it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm not uh, saying why. I was just so angry. True, true. You have to go and watch this. I know you must be people that to watch that show all my days. But, that, but that's a sign good. of how good the actors are in that scene of and just how act- pissed off I was when that when that ended. Because they're doing something that they're holding off on, and that's quite difficult to do in romance. Yeah, you, 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 you thought about. they you thought they, the payoff was going to come at the end of season two, yeah. but they know they managed. To, yeah. No, they did, they've Ross done it well. Thing. They've done it very they, well. That sounds, that sounds interesting, but I've got to check this out. Damn it. But also, flicking... just for you, for you Troy, yeah. Gillian Anderson still looks as good as she did when she did the X-Men. Oh, yeah, she's seen this. <laughs> she's the mother yeah. of the guy. Oh, oh the yeah, okay, yeah. okay, I mean, I mean. I mean, the whole cast, it just brings it, but she is oh, a particular yeah. highlight. Just the whole bloody cast. And the guy that plays Eric is becoming one of my favourite British actors right now. Because he's yeah. just charisma coming out of his asshole. His laugh reminds me of you, Troy. I was here. <laughs> yeah, my wife's met you, so when we've seen it, he laughs like that. She goes, Haha, that's Troy. I was like, yep, that's Troy. Dirty <laughs> laugh, Troy. It's a good laugh. But basically, it's just a great show. Because when I first saw it, it took me a while to watch it because it says sex education. I was like, oh, another show about teenagers having sex. Yeah, that's what, that's what, literally, that's what I thought. I thought it was like another skin or something. I was like, oh, I don't it's know. It's really I'm... not. Yeah. It's so much it better, is, and it's well acted. Yeah. It's well thought through. It's sensible. Yeah, it's brilliant. Okay, not um, it's America. When I found out it was British, I gave it a chance. I thought it was American from the advertising. It was very American style presentation. <laughs> when I found out it was English, I was like, "Well, I'm giving it a chance." Yeah, because that's, that's how Netflix do their trailers, though. They're, they're very I'm, not, right. I'm not taking a shot at America. I just prefer British humour. Because they're a little bit more careful with what they do. And just funnier. And it's not as cheesy. I love that. Um, but basically, if there is good British American comedy, one day we'll get into that. But yeah, there is. Uh, I was really surprised at how good this show is. It's just... And like Tom said, I wanted to punch someone. And that person has a certain thing. I would have happily thrown him down the stairs. Now, Tom... <laughs> Considering my, considering my job, I feel bad saying that. But yeah, this same here. Oh my god, you, you guys are selling it to me. I love it right now. I'm loving it. Uh, 
Because <laughs> that because like I believe it's the person, not the the thing that makes a person. This person will be thrown down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know you have no idea how bad what he's saying is Troy until you watch the show <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Um, but he's slappable even you know it doesn't matter where you're from or what your thing is I would slap slap him it's, yep. it's so close and you think you're going to get something and you don't but they obviously are confident that they're going to run and run and run for years with this, which is great. So it's confidence. <laughs> but they definitely know they've got another series in it. Yeah, they've got like maybe a third season because at that point they're going to get older. Well, I, I, gonna... also, I think if you try and pull this on for another, pull it out to more than the third season, people will get annoyed with you not giving them that payoff. Season three just needs to end it. Do a British way of short and sweet, get yeah. out. Season three doesn't need to end it, but season three needs to end that particular story arc. And oh, then, and then, then and that that end within that four, mm. potentially take a risky chance, do a skins and reboot the cast for a new season, a new term with new people coming in. Well, no, it doesn't need to be that. You just have to have it so that those characters are dealing with being together whilst trying to give relationship advice and shit like that. Season two, we're still dealing with the hangovers of season one. Yeah. So season three really needs to end, tie it all up and start new problems for people to support. Yeah. Mm. But I, I love it. They've also successfully made to put new characters in. While, and this is, I think Tom agrees with me, they've taken the background characters and all moved them to main cast. And it's very um, good. Yeah. They're really well with it. Everyone deserves to be there. They haven't got too many characters where often some people are frustrated that the original characters don't interact as much, the original three. I think it's better payoff for season three when they all come back into more interaction going into season three. Yeah. That's no, I agree with that. It's about making you want it more. Yeah. And actually, a lot of people have been smartly saying, you know what? This season's really, 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 really good. Like the first the first season was amazing. I'd say you were always concerned that season two just might not live up to it, but and it, it, they made it so different from season one whilst keeping it familiar that it worked. And they did it by doing the backflip over the high jump, sticking two fingers up at people. Yeah. Legitly. I'm obviously coronavirus, we hate you, bitch. Um, it means a third season is going to be delayed for the foreseeable future, but it will. production has been delayed. I am good on Netflix, though. It will happen. Netflix. Well, it's definitely it's definitely been commissioned for a third series. It will yeah. happen. It's just because of this corona bitch virus. Um, it will come when it comes down a bit, I suppose. But I look forward to it. Anyway, I've now got a quick bit of time to talk about my fair pick now. Oh, balls. Okay. Marianne. Oh, yeah, by the way, yeah, yeah, Marianne is also a Netflix show. I don't need to give sex education any more advertising. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mary Ann, though, is a French horror show. Oh, wait, Mary, okay. Um, Buried was not advertised really well. I happened to see this at someone's house. You know, when it goes on to, like, you know, Netflix is a noisy bitch. If you leave it on something, it will just play a trailer. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. like to be quiet, quite annoying sometimes. Um, it just played this uh, horror trailer, and it was Mary Ann. I was like, oh, I, I should watch that. So it's basically an eight-part French. Um, I have to watch more French cinema um, TV after this because I've generally been told French TV and cinema is really good. Um, it's about a writer called Emma who, um, when she was younger, was um, had nightmares of a witch. And um, she wrote about the witch. She's now a famous author later. Um, and... Uh, and the thing is, she wrote about people, her childhood growing up, and over the season, you see her reunite with her old school friends. Yeah. She comes back to her small town because the witch she spoke about has gained power through her novels. So it's like Harry Potter, three popular international bestseller. She's well known. But Mary Ann, the actual witch, has taken over one of her friend's mothers and basically threatens to cut. Um, kills the daughter in front of her a book signing 
to have her come back to the French town. And uh, it's just creepy. I don't know how to say it. It's really just they stay on shots. Emma's, at first, it's interesting. Um, she has what I would refer as a lesbian haircut, but um, for a long time, there's a lot of females around. You feel like they're going down that road, but then she just gets off of a guy, so she, she likes men. What do I know about haircuts? But it's just, she's not the most likable character sometimes, but there's flaws. Yeah. It's just creepy. And uh, I enjoyed it. And it ended the first season with a cliffhanger twist, which unfortunately because we live in a world where people want to watch Love Island on Netflix instead of really good horror, it's been cancelled. So oh, there is no second season. Oh, don't get me started on Love Island. Don't get me started on that. Oh, my God. So you want to correct shit like Love is Blind, which is utter trash, dumpster fire, but they don't want Maryam. Yeah, it's a WWE thing of we have too many people, we have too many quality wrestlers, something gets left behind. So unfortunately, Marianne is a high-quality product on a platform that has so much competition. It's just they're competing against themselves sometimes, Netflix. Unfortunately, nobody saw it. And it's a shame because Netflix immediately normally announces another season immediately. And it premiered in September and there was no word until January. It's been cancelled. But go check it out anyway. Don't let me put, don't let me put you off. Just really good. It's just really funny as well. Exactly. Yeah, I'll check it out, man. There we go. I think I saw the trailer yeah. for that. It looked pretty good. Yeah, but like I said, it's the uh, problem with Netflix is there's so much competition. Stuff gets pushed to the side. That's the good thing about Netflix, but there are so many shows that I, people keep saying, oh, you should watch this on Netflix. And I've never heard of it because they just keep pumping out so much stuff. Thankfully, they now have that latest button which shows you what's coming each week and next week. So you yeah. can keep an eye on it. <clears throat> but like, yeah. I think it came out... Um, I'm trying to think of what show was big on Netflix at that time. But it came out at a time when there was a lot of new shows landing on Netflix in September. Yeah. It got... <laughs> but it's one of those underrated gems. Um, I just mm -hmm. wish there wasn't... If they just chose not to have a cliffhanger ending... But I, I suppose it's better that way. Horror, so you know what? <clears throat> I changed my mind. I like the fact that, you know, a lot of horror films have a twist ending, but they never need to follow up on it. It's true. It's horror. It's, hor it's, a, horror, it's a horror trope, isn't it? It's I changed my mind on that. I think it can just stay as it is, and it can just stay perfect one season. Fine. Because evil wins at the end. Yeah, always does. Especially the horror. Evil yeah. finds a way to prevail. Mm to survive, basically, without giving too many spoilers away. But I kind of knew they might do that, because yeah. it's a film. You know? But yeah, go watch it. That's me done. Right. Stop the mic. <laughs> I'm going to get comfortable. Yeah. It's history time with Tom. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not doing anything historical this week, actually. Oh, oh great! I'm still excited to see what you do because it's story time. You're so good yeah. with your description. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do yeah, it. Thanks. Just completely oversell me. Thank you. <laughs> Very welcome. We, we, we're strapping the rocket ship to your back, bro. We'll do it. <laughs> we're giving you the push, son. We, we're, we're putting him over. WrestleMania, mean of him, Brock Lesnar. Brother. You just got to kick his ass. <laughs> just kick I him think... in the dick. That's what everyone does. All anyway. right. It's like one of those big bosses. You have to find the trick to take him out. With Brock Lesnar, you just kick him in the dick. <laughs> Did the other take off? He's obviously got a small dick because it's very easy to get him up there. Anyway. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm probably going to buy a bruised dick by this point. Brock, if, if you ever listen to this, come at me, bitch. All right, let's go. Undertaker, Seth Rollins, they've all just neat. Uh, Ricochet. They've yeah, all just all just all everyone just sold out. Drew McIntyre did it as well. Yeah, true. Good point. Kick Mr. Dick in the main event. He's kryptonite. <laughs> it's a kryptonite. Any person. Kick him in the well, gym. Yeah. Any man. Kryptonite. Kryptonite, yeah. Even yeah. women. Like, come on now. I, like, it's, it hurts when you punch, kick them down there, bruv. Like, ow. Anyway, Tom. <laughs> anyway, right. Let's TV. Go on. <laughs> okay, so the first one that I'm bringing up this week, and you guys might know it, 
It's a brilliant show. It's called Mind Hunter. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. That's that looks so damn good. It's Where available on know? Netflix. Um, That's it. It's just come to the end of its second series. It's absolutely fantastic. Hmm. The basic premise of it is um, these two guys who became like the FBI. There was no term for a serial killer until like the seventies. And it was the bids based on the guys who originally came up with that term and the team they put together to go and meet people who basically were serial killers. Mm. And it's just, it's really interesting. It's the psychology of murder. It's the psychology of these characters with their own issues. It has a nice mixture of sticking to following a linear story of trying to catch murderers yeah. and to understand serial killers and things like that, which is really good. Like they go in this the main guy who um quite clearly is autistic. Like but Asperger's level of that. Yeah. Going and speaking to um I don't know if you ever heard of him, the uh the co ed killer. Ed somebody, I can't remember his surname. I've heard Ed's... of him, but I can't remember what he did. That's he, the thing. He he killed about fifteen women and they were all college students. Oh okay. yeah. Ed, Ed, the college, Ed, yeah, the college college killer, yeah. yeah. Ended, ended it by the last person he killed was his mother and he chopped her head off and used her as a dartboard. Uh, Damn. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could do that sometimes. <laughs> but down. yeah, so basically you following these two characters, you've got one guy who is this kind of... I, I guess he's autistic and he's played that way to a degree. He's obsessed with it, He's but he kind of tries to empathise mm. and it hurts him. It's a bit like the same premise of... Um, in Red Dragon, you know, um, the character Graham Norton plays in Red Dragon for the the, the Hannibal Lecter film, where oh, yeah. he can put himself in the mind of killers. Yeah, this guy does. This guy tries to do that. He tries to understand where killers are coming from in order to catch people, and it hurts him because he's having to kind of imagine hor- horrific things. But he's really good at it. And then you've got the guy who's his boss, who is more of a sort of standard, standard gun shoe, yeah, standard. Really likable character, but he's a proper old school bollocks to this. I'm not doing that kind of <laughs> character. <laughs> but, and, it's pre- and it's really good. The first series was excellent. The second series wasn't quite as good, but it was still brilliant. And they've quite clearly lined it up for a third series because the second series, you had kind of subplots going through each episode, but at the same time, it was based around them trying to find one particular killer. And it's them getting closer and closer to catching this. And it's the killer that really did exist. Yeah. So it's quite interesting. But at the same time, but the very in the very first episode, you're introduced to a character who you're never told his name. You don't know anything about him. And he's basically doing autoerotic asphyxiation masturbation in the first season, first episode. So he gets turned on by doing dangerous things. Basically. And um, this character reappears a few times. And based on the way it looks, I'm almost certain that it's going to turn out that he, if they do a season three, which is questionable at the moment, will turn out to be the Zodiac Killer. Zodiac, I was just about to say that. Zodiac Killer. I mean, one of the main reasons I think that is because David Fincher, who is one of them, is the executive producer of this show, he's the guy who directed the Zodiac film. So it's obviously something, ah. so it's a real passion thing for him already. So I'm thinking that's who it's going to turn out to be. They never say so, but he's escalating what he's doing all the time. They keep coming back to this guy. So I've got a feeling that's what it's going to turn out to be. But yeah, like I said, but it's brilliant. They're really good at building tension and tying it into real world events, things that happened at the time. It's really good. Plus the development of the actual main characters. They've all got their own stuff going on that is screwed up and things, but it isn't. it never gets over the top. I never got you know too far. I mean? is, is, is it like, is it like a, a Will Graham from like the Mads Mikkelsen and Hannibal? Is it like that? Similar to that? Um, yes, that, that, that. that's a better description than the Red Dragon one, yeah. yeah. I, I hadn't thought of that as a TV show. I love that show. Yeah, <laughs> the visuals, the visuals are yeah. stunning. It's very, very similar. The guy plays it quite similarly to the way the guy in Hannibal plays it. Yeah. Not ah. quite so extreme. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they ever at any point that I remember state that this guy has any kind of mental health issue. Yeah, but he does. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm autistic, so like I've yeah, seen bad autism, <laughs> Sheldon, Sheldon Cooper, Big Bang Theory, yeah, yeah. and good autism. 
like a typical, which is another Netflix show. But like I've seen good and bad people with autistic um, properties because uh, obviously we work with autistic people as well. So where do you think it falls on the? I think it falls. I think they do very well with it. They handle it nicely. Yeah, because it's not the main thing about the guy. That's mm. good. That's what they do with Sheldon Cooper. It's why I hate the Big Bang for mm. They do it to get cheap laughs. It's like um, you know, um, I wasn't quite the outsider with um the, the black girl. She's yeah. black and she's like they make sure she's told she's like part autistic. And like they never they never really play on it that much. That's why I like it. Mm. She's just smart, you know what I'm saying? So you would say it's very good. They don't put too much attention on it. If you're interested in sort of crime drama and things like that, which on day one I said I was, um, yeah, it's brilliant. It's it so it plays a line between really good um, fiction and actual, like I say, real world events. It plays a it takes a very good line between the two, mm. and mm. yeah, I cannot recommend it highly enough. Unfortunately, season three was supposed to happen, but they've. Uh, about a month ago, they announced that it's indefinitely suspended. So we don't know whether that's going to happen or not. But I don't think it was to do with the current situation in the world. I think it was actually suspended before that. So mm. I don't know if it's just they didn't think they had a big enough viewership or what. But they've definitely set it up for a third season. So I'm hoping they'll go with it. But at the same time, they could leave it where they are as well. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it felt like a niche product. It felt kind of niche when people like it. It's not as niche as you'd expect, but it, if you're interested in real world crime, that kind of stuff, yeah. this is a brilliant, brilliant series. Yeah. David Fincher is an yeah, amazing. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. He is. I mean, I know he's not the director on this; he's the executive producer. But he, you, it's got that kind of feel of a Fincher production on it. It's uh, dark without being too dark. It's yeah. It, love it's it. Love really, it. it's gritty and it's edgy and it's yeah. It's good fun. Well, not fun, but it's it's a very enjoyable watch. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, I got you. Yeah. Okay. Netflix has uh, got a situation now where there's so much stuff they're having to cancel it because the quality of Netflix is so bloody high. Yeah. That's the thing. It feels like you have to be a sex education to be able to keep pumping out seasons. You know? <laughs> yeah, even that will even that will have a finite life. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. It's just got short shelf life. Definitely. But it's still better than Love is Blind. Um, so your next one, Tom. Okay, so yeah. this one is coming up purely because I'm an obsessive about this show anyway, but I'm going on to one very specific thing that came out a week or so ago. It was Red Dwarf the Promised Land, which was uh-huh. a a 90 minute special which really brilliantly tied back to the original TV show as well it's all about the cats you know in, in the very first episode of Red Dwarf ever they talked about the cats developing and going off on two ships to try and find the promised land Yeah, and this is actually what happened to those cats basically is them ending back up at Red Dwarf and right. yeah it's. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. It is brilliantly done. All of the original cast are back. You've got a couple of really interesting things like the discovery of, you know how over the years of Red Dwarf, Rimmer has been soft light, hard light. Yeah. And now on this one, they found a new thing that's even better called Diamond Light. <laughs> diamond Light. What? Yeah. Basically, he looks like a sparkly superhero at one point. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is... In the world's shittest superhero with as many sparkles on him as he can possibly have. Is basically <laughs> what you're looking you're at. You're saying that they've made Chris Barry even more ridiculous than Ace Rimmer. I love that. He's perfect. Yes. They, and he sounded a bit like Ace Rimmer, but he wasn't Ace Rimmer. <laughs> so. Like, like, as soon as he turned into Diamond Light, his voice went deeper. Oh my <laughs> gosh. But yeah, brilliant. The Diamond Light thing doesn't last for the whole episode, it comes in. You'd have to watch it to understand. Um, but yeah, Red Dwarf is one of my favourite shows of all time. I've said this to you guys previously. Yeah. Um, and they had that they had a massive break, and then they've done season 10, 11, and 12, which were all really good. And this is 
became standard. So mm. I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's funny as hell. It's got a really good cast behind it. I mean, um, obviously you've got Chris Barry, Craig Charles, Daniel Jules, Robert Llewellyn. It's got Holly back in it again. Okay. Holly really yeah, is that's good. Him, which is awesome. Um, there's a guy called Ray Fearon plays the king of the cat people. Uh, I'm trying to think of things that he's been in. You might know. I can't think of anything. He was in Coronation Street for a couple of years, I think. But he's a very good actor. He's really, really cool. Um, yeah, and a really good baddie as well. But it's just, there's so many beautiful little touches that are typical Grant Naylor. Grant and Naylor things to do. Yeah. That just think, yeah, perfect. I mean, one of the best ones is in order to get into the King's uh, audience chamber, everyone has to come through a cat flap, which is just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> They've got oh, a massive yeah. cat flap. It's just absolutely brilliant. <laughs> and it's just stuff like that. Little touch you think, yeah, if they were cats, that would be what they'd do. Yeah. It's just. <laughs> The kind of things you never thought of, and it's absolutely beautiful. And it's one of the things that I've always liked about Red Dwarf is it's not scared of tackling big issues. So this one is actually ta- talking about an issue of sort of religion and the basis of faith and things like that, because half, half of these cats believe that Lister is their god, which obviously causes huge problems within this episode. Yeah. But um, they've never been afraid of taking on those kind of talking yeah. points and dealing with them sensitively, but also in a really funny way. Yeah. In many ways, it kind of reminds me of, if you guys have ever seen the stage show Book of Mormon, oh, it's what? like that. It's dealing with a really tricky subject in the funniest way possible. And yeah, um, so like I said, The Promised Land, for me, it was 8 or 9 out of 10 for just pure enjoyment. Okay. Um, nice. And yeah, I cannot recommend it highly enough. Okay. Especially uh, if you're a fan of the show, go and watch it. You will enjoy it. Well, I have an announcement to make. What? Talking of Red Dwarf, we oh, have okay. decided. I'm just going to go with it. So, okay. we have decided to add a second podcast to our streaming. It's going to be a episode by episode show um, review of Red Dwarf. Um, and it will be available every Tuesday. It's something that we've thought about for a while, but it's something that we feel like we can bring a lot of passion to. And so we decided that we will add, for the time being, a Red Dwarf review every week. And once that finishes, it's going to take a while, we're figuring <laughs> out them. 2022 is a long way away. But, yeah, I, 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 know that, I know that Troy's going to pump for friends after that if he can. <laughs> but, yeah, right. We could just do a whole podcast on that, and it's friends. Yeah. Well, the problem is because we know the rules, we haven't quite decided what this special will be in two weeks. But friends, unfortunately, can't qualify right now because there's a special wow. coming soon. So it's incomplete. Its future is incomplete. So we can't do it because I guarantee you, if it's successful, it will lead to another series. Because they will have money to throw at that. So, th- we can't do Friends. Well, we can do Friends, but it would take five years. So, we thought we'd start with Red Dwarf first. Because <laughs> it's, right, right. Well, we reckon we can get it done in 18 months, roughly. So, and obviously, if Dave put more out with this corona thing happening, um, there could be more. There's most probably going to be more. Um, that almost certainly will be, yeah. Yeah, you know the one. Yeah. So we decided to dedicate that. And because we're British, we must probably dedicate time to Brit- that second podcast. We then change to another British comedy show after. Sorry. We're just British. <laughs> we're not apologizing for it. We'll bring up the American stuff and the weekly stuff and in the occasional big deep dive. But we're British. So. Hey. We, 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 I pull out American shows here and then, so we're doing we're doing, we're doing, we're doing the job. So you know we're British though, but we want to bring more British television to exactly. yeah. attention because now with Netflix and Amazon, there's more time than ever for people from around the world to see the exactly. variety. But we might stick the classics, the complete talks, and 
the Red Dwarf podcast just as British for now. So we haven't come up with a name yet, but, uh, you know, I will debut the sign-off for today. <laughs> I want this to be the podcast title and it won't be allowed. Tom has told me not to do it. You cannot swear in the title oh. of a podcast. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I will do the sign off at least before we finish. So, guys, thank you very much. Um, we will next week have links because we're going to start to put stuff on Spotify and iTunes now. Um, but we will update you next week and everything. Thank you for the continued support. Um, please, if you like, share and subscribe as always. Guys, that's goodbye for me. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Snug off, you fucking smuggers. Good night.